And we are live. David DeVoe, man, what is up? What's going on, man? Dude, are you ready to break the freaking internet? I'm, am I ready to? I, yeah. yeah, I am. I'm always ready. I'm always ready to break shit. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, let me, uh, let me just get us started with some warm up music real quick, man. Cause I, I just like to get the vibe <laughs> going. And I know, like, um, I know Facebook will probably cut this part out. So I think the only people that'll get to enjoy this is our, are our live listeners now. But I'm going to start it off with just a little music. All right, man. Are you ready? Please. Yeah. Let's All go. Right. All right. Are you. <laughs> Can you hear it? <laughs> yeah, I heard it. Oh no, I heard it for a minute. Now it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll cut that off, man. I just wanted to play that for you, brother. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Though, so listen. I mean, I don't know if there's going to be enough time to even dig into all I want to talk about today, man. But um, why don't we just uh, why don't we just start off? Let's talk just a little bit for those who don't know you and that are tuned in and want to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, yeah. Just tell us what part of the country you're in, uh, and 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 how long you've been doing it, man, and how you got into it. Let's dig into all that. Okay, um, in New Jersey, East Coast. So I've been doing this, I don't know, like nine years or so, and um, you know, I started right right as the crash was crashing, and uh, I was a lender before that for about ten years, and then around 2009, 2010. Um, lending, you know, went away for about six months. And so I pivoted at that point and got into real estate. Got it. Got it. So like last week was a big week for you, uh, would probably be an understatement, right? Yeah, it was, you know, it was chill. It was, we were just hanging. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, I want to, I want to dig into all that, man, because one thing that you and I do share is we both came from Keller Williams. And, um, one thing I can tell you is this will not be a a, a conversation about bashing Keller Williams because I think uh, we both enjoyed our time there. Uh, I was there for three years. How long were you there? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. So about yeah. as long as I was. And yeah. um, and I think you enjoyed your time there. You 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 know you and I talked about this a little bit yesterday. You learned a ton there, right? Yeah, a ton. If I could just share, um, you know, because last week was noisy, and um, it's amazing to see how things get spun and and you know written and posted and uh i really want to just express my gratitude to keller williams and and you know gary keller and all of the ops that we got to grow with and and all of the just agents that i had the opportunity to network with um, because i learned everything i know about expansion at keller williams I, I learned everything i know about lead generation from mike ferry and i learned everything i know about expansion from Keller Williams. And a lot of what I said didn't get to make it um, into a lot of the posts and articles and stuff. Um, but I'm definitely, I think very highly of them. I think they're a great company. I think they're going to continue to be a great company. Um, they had a major impact on my life in many different ways. And for that, I am, I'm grateful. And I know uh, many, many others are as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so really there's a couple different ways I like to go with the show. Obviously is, is to find out, to help people find out a little bit more about you, your background. Um, and I, but the value add piece I like to have is, is, you know, at the end of the day, you're still, you're still a team leader and you still run a team that sells over 300 homes annually and does over $125 million in volume. So there's some, there's some real value in that. And, and, and so I, I definitely want to dig into your, your, your transition story, but I also want to, I want to hear how you're doing it at a high level. So, why don't we talk a little bit first about um, about your transition? You've, you've been in real estate for uh, just over 10 years now. Um, you said you started off as a lender. Um, was Where were you at before you went to Keller Williams? Um, I was at a company called Liberty Realty, uh, which is a, a local company in Hudson County. Awesome okay. company. So kind of like, just an, like an indie broker? Indie broker, but substantial you know they have 300 plus agents got it okay and then when did you really start getting it in your business right because we all have that we all have that point in our business and, and it hits differently for other people right like you know where you where you understand like this can be a business it's, it's not something where I, I i i need to sell you know nine six or nine homes like the average realtor in the united states when did you realize that Dude, I could do this at a high level. Like I could sell hundreds of homes. When did that start? When did that start to resonate with you? 
that part, like when it, when you say it like that, um, it was a moment like that where it was like, oh, we did 117. That means we could do 205. Mm -hmm. And um, that was right after we joined KW, like a few years ago. Um, because if you were to look back at my career, you know, my first six months, I sold three, like two or three homes. Then it was 13. And then it was 22, um, then 36 and 48, 60, 100, 200. And then, um, you know, now we're, where we're at now over over 300. Um, and that whole first part where you're going from like a few to a dozen to two dozen, that is so it's just so brutal. Um, that that path in your career was just, you know, I was a single agent. It was just is such a grind um to, yeah. to get like right from like 12 to 24 is like so hard and then 24 to, to 36 to 48 so hard and then at a certain point you know you grow this team and you grow the business and you start to be able to to um you know i, I didn't build systems from the ground up i had to kind of piece them together as the business grew and then all of a sudden you're like oh i I've got this thing and this is working. So if I, if I do more of that and then I add in this, then we're going to go here. So it was just a few years ago where it really became quite predictable that we can, we can grow that, that big. Yeah. Yeah. So you, 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 I mean, you were a grinder, uh, you, you know, you were like, you said you were doing 12 and 24 and 36 or whatever, um, maybe moving up by, by multiples of 12 homes per year or averaging thereabouts. And then, you know, it really started to kick into you when you made the move over to Keller Williams. What was it about your move to Keller Williams that um, that really kicked things off for you? And and, and, and I, I'm, I'm just going to assume it's probably something to do with the Red Book and coaching and, and, and really starting to track your business and so forth. I will. So I was always a coaching addict, so to speak. I always had at least three coaches. Okay. At all times. Um, I always had at least two different business coaches and a mindset coach. And most of the time I had two mindset coaches. Mm -hmm. um, and so I always had that coaching um, sort of uh, foundation, no matter where I was. The thing that and, and if you look at my my growth as a single agent and then our growth, when once we built the team, it was always doubling, you know. And so to go from 117 to 205. Um, things changed drastically. It's not just like when you go from like 60 to 105, it's, and then you go from 105 to, to, or 117 to 205. It's not just that you're doing more of the same stuff. Like mm -hmm. it becomes way different. Um, and, and that I, you know, I, I learned that very quickly after I joined Keller Williams, because when I joined, I kept hearing everybody tell me like, you get, you got to expand. You got to expand. You have to do this, go to ESO, do all this. And I'm just like, I was just like, at first I was like, sh just shut up. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> like I'm trying to figure this out. And then I learned, um, you know, my OP had, t had told me like, you have to go to expansion systems orientation. Um, it's really going to help your business, even if you don't expand. Cause I had no idea what expansion even was. Right. Sure. I was just trying to hold it together. So I went and um, that's really where I learned about how to, how to look for the first time. Like I looked at my business and my business was surrounding me. Right. And if I went over here, my business followed me over here. And if I went up, my business went up. If I went down, my business went down. It was like, I was in the center of it and my emotions and whatever I did, whether it was through lead generation or through, you know, hiring or growth or whatever, that's how I felt. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so for the first time that, that first class at, at ESO. Um, it was just the way Kristen Cole, who's a, a good friend of mine, one of, an, an amazing coach um, that I had for a few years. She's the way she said something. I forget exactly what it was, but I wrote it down in a journal. I felt myself like out of body experience, out of business experience where like I came out of my business and was like up here looking down at it. And I was able to chunk it down to like, at first it was just three chunks. It was, you know, administrative operations marketing lead generation mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then there, there's the sales team and so when i was able to do that it was like whoa like i 
I, it just flipped a switch all of a sudden for me that I, that I started to really understand um, predictability and duplication in business w- without it being just me dialing more. Yeah, yeah. And, and so is that is that kind of were you a very prospecting based when you just started into the business? Yeah, yeah. I was. That was all I did. I I was literally in a broom closet. They, you know, when I was at Liberty Realty, they they opened a new office and they were like, pick you know, whatever office you want. And I was like, I want to go in the basement in that broom closet, just put a counter in there. And like, I just no windows or whatever. And I would just go in and just crush the phones. Um, you know, I would, I would role play from like seven fifteen to seven forty five, yeah. And then I would be on the phones at seven fifty, and I wouldn't stop until 11. I took a couple of mindset breaks in there and then I would role play again from 11 to 11:30. Then I would hit the gym from 12 be back at the office at two to do whatever else I was doing for the rest of the day, whether that's appointments or prospecting again. So yeah, that was always my, um, that's, that was always how I built my business. One thing you keep referring back to, and, and I like this, man, because I think we're in complete alignment on this, um, is you keep refer, referring back to, to mindset, right? So t- talk about the importance of mindset in your business. It's everything. It's everything. I mean, you, first of all, if you don't understand that you have a certain amount of responsibility and control over your mindset. You're going to be miserable, even if you're very successful. Mm-hmm. That's the, that's my experience, right? And so it starts when you're just a new agent, right? You have to work on your mindset, but it's different when you're a new agent because there is an element of it that you have to kind of fake it till you make it. You have to like sometimes grind that mindset and and work through some of the the challenges and negativity in order to just to survive, right? And then as you grow, you start to be more purposeful about it. And and what I learned was I, you know, I I read every book I could, you know, I studied with the best mindset coach that is out there. And I had several mindset coaches. And you know what what I learned is that happiness and having a positive mindset is a skill and a system that you have to not only figure out, but you have to practice and you have to work. And the more you practice it, even if it doesn't feel genuine and it's kind of fake it till you make it in the beginning, the more you practice that system, the more it overrides some of the other default negativity mechanisms in your mind and and it starts to become more natural and you start to to actually feel it and it becomes easier to uh, overcome challenges and and stay in a positive mindset uh, the more you practice it. Yeah. It is, it's my personal belief, by the way, that um, that that it, it is an ep- it is an epidemic that we have a lot of people that the problem is with especially with realtors um, and coaches and, and, uh, and mentors is most of them are teaching skill set. And the, 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 the funny thing is, is that we have a lot of skilled people with the incorrect mindset. So we have a lot of people that. Tell me if you've ever run into a situation before where you've talked to an agent where they know what to do, they just don't do it. And the the disconnect between knowing what to do and not doing it is mindset. Mindset is what bridges that gap, right? If you have the right mindset and you know what to do, that's when you become really dangerous. But if you're skilled and you have the wrong mindset, that doesn't add up. Yeah, I think that's true, right? Because you, as a newer agent, as you go through these challenges and trying to grow, the it becomes it's really difficult to keep a strong mindset when you're getting rejected constantly when you're you know you you just you you feel like you're not getting anywhere um and and that's the time where the skills uh, and and the discipline and the system around that mindset are going to grow and are going to become stronger and that's where the persistence comes in um and i think you're absolutely right like you could have all the skills in the world you could practice your listing presentation like 19,000 times. At some point, if you don't work on your mindset, maybe you still will be successful, but you're not going to be happy. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think I think I would compare it to um, skill set is like pharmaceutical drugs, right? Skill it, that it's marketable. You can sell that, right? You can package it and sell it. And yeah. and, and in many cases, you you cannot do that with. Um, herbal healing, right? And you can't do it. You, you, it's hard to package and, and sell mindset, right? So it's the same thing. Um, now, granted, you've you've come along some some uh, or come across, excuse me, some great coaches 
talk, talk to me a little bit about, man, this is the interesting part for me because it seems like everybody goes through this journey, right? Where they start into real estate and you, you are a grinder, especially if you, if you're calling expired or for sale by owners or neighborhood prospecting, whatever that looks like, right? You start to make a little money and, you know, either you're the type of person who, you know, you go out and, and, and buy stuff, you, you know, you buy cars and clothes and stuff like that, or you reinvest in yourself and your business. And, and I was the type of person that reinvested in myself and my business. And it sounded like you're the same way, but during that journey, you start to figure out, um, I don't know. It's, it's weird. It like you're presented with these different ideas about personal growth. And then, and, you, and then you start to learn like mindset is a big part of that. Any personal recommendations about books? I mean, I can tell you one of my favorite book books that I had read during that period was as a man thinketh uh, by Dr. James Allen. Have you read that one? Yeah. Yeah. Any, any personal recommendations on books for our audience? For my yeah. yeah. I've read dozens. Um, and there are two. Uh, actually, there's like four or five that I would strongly recommend, but there are two that are like the foundation of our group. And um, we do mindset training every day with our group. So the first one is Taming Your Gremlin. Okay. I'm writing it down. <laughs> um, Taming Your Gremlin, which is was a life changer for me. And it, and it actually taught me these systems and um, processes in, in for your mindset that you can use all the time okay. and uh the other one is um so tammy gremlin definitely was a, a life changer for me and i know a lot of people who also have read it i said the same thing and then the go-giver um great years later was another one yeah right great, great book yeah i've read that one dude that's um that's that's some good stuff so um so I, I, obviously it's like you're at a point in your business now where you've come along this journey over the last 10 years or, or so now. And, you know, you, the, the David DeVoe today is a lot different than the David DeVoe of 10 years ago. And um, and so, you know, three years at Keller Williams, all this stuff that you've learned. Right. You're 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 crushing it in real estate. Um, and somebody comes along and you hear about this new brokerage, right? EXP and, 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 and you start to, to, you know, to, to maybe pay attention a little bit, but talk to me. And I don't know the answer to this, but I'm interested to hear it as I'm sure our audience is talk to me about, or walk me through when you first heard about EXP, how you responded and then how long it actually took for you to start doing your, your due diligence. And then when you, and then, and then when you join, how long it took for that journey. Um, I think it was probably two years ago that I was first introduced to it. Okay. And my response was, don't ever waste my time, another half hour of my time like that again. Um, I didn't see it. Uh, and I don't know what it was. And it could have been, you know, just where I was in my career. You know, and it could have been the way, it could have been my mindset. You know, it just, it just didn't, you know, it wasn't something that I was interested in. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, a few months ago is when Tammy had a conversation with me and she called me for some advice on expansion. And, you know, through our conversation, I, I said she was telling me how she was she was basically telling me about the model. And halfway through the conversation, I was like, wait a minute, back up a second. Like, tell me this again. And, and that's where I was like, at the end of that call, I was like, I think we should talk about this. And she was like, yeah, I think you should probably talk about this. I don't think she was knew it was like kind of a recruiting call. And I didn't either. Um, that was a few months ago. And then uh, let me back up. Before that, like last year, when it, when Dan um, Beer joined and Kyle Whistle joined. And, and Dan Beer and I were both on Mega Live like a few months earlier. And I would just gotten to know him a little bit in his business. And then I saw them join and all the noise that was made there. And, you know, I still was just kind of like, huh. That's annoying. Like, you know, not interested. Move forward. And, and then, you know, whether I don't know what it was, whether it was timing or, you know, kind of where I was at. And, and I was really in this deep search, like a soul search for how do I make this work for my agents? How do I make this this massive opportunity for them? And I was in the process of launching a title joint venture for them and, you know,
I lost your audio, bud. Can you hear me? See if you can dial back in. Can you hear me? I love, 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 love technology. Hang on, guys. Just give me just a second. He should be right back, and then we can uh, dial back in. Anybody want to hear any more Bell Biv DeVoe while we're uh, <laughs> while we're transitioning? Here he is. You got me. What's up? What's up? Yeah, my phone keeps ringing off the hook, but yeah. yeah. So I think where we're at is is is, is you were you were talking a little bit about like um, you know seeing Dan Beer, Kyle Whistle, those guys move over, and and then you know it started to take. I, I guess it started to get some traction with you a little bit. No, it just kind of annoyed me uh, at that point. And, and I was like, mm -mm, all right, I still didn't look into it yeah. very much. You know, I was, I was doing my thing, man. And um, and then I don't know if you heard this before as I was talking about it. You know, I, a few months ago, I was in this deep search for trying to find the answer for what's right for, for my people and, you know, get them to a place where they could be financially free and, and create um, passive income. And I... I planned on doing that through having them invest in our equity group and buy investment properties and, you know, our, uh, invest in our private lending joint venture and a title joint venture as ways to create passive income. And then right around that time is when this opportunity came and it just, it, it was something that I said, I have to look into this right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it obviously for you, when you started looking into it, I mean, it's, it's a different decision, right. Than just um, being a, 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 a solo agent, right? Because a solo agent, um, you know, you just, you send your license back to the state and, and then they mail it to a different brokerage and then you're changed over, right? It's fairly easy. But for you, um, you know, you're running like, I mean, you, you have an expansion team in, in different states. I mean, there's a lot of different moving pieces to your business. So you've got a lot of different um, a lot of different lives to consider when you're making a decision like that. So how did you approach your team with, uh, with this idea of uh, potentially moving brokerages? Honestly, I started out by asking them questions and uh, I started asking, I, I wasn't asking questions about moving brokerages. I was asking them questions about value. And we just, you know, we, we asked them where they felt they were getting the most value. And then we, kind of measure that against where they were paying their, the most money. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we started asking the questions, well, you know, what if, what if this were the case, you know, what if we were the DeVoe group as a brokerage brokerage, um, you know, what would the benefits be? And, and, you know, what if your, your cap was, was this amount, how much of an impact would that have on your life? You know, just uh, in, in the immediate future and in the long term. And those questions started to turn into discussions. Mm -hmm. um, it, w it wasn't really like we came to them and were like, dude, there's this brokerage, it's virtual, we're going. Like it was, it was very, it was, a, it was for a long time, for, you know, a month and a half or so, we were asking questions to discover what was going to be best for them. And based off of that, it, it, you know, I had to look at options and, and I, you know, I did a lot of due diligence. You know, I flew to Phoenix, I have my financial planner do a full analysis of the company and the stock and everything. I, you know, I, I made sure that we were going to be able to sell a ton of real estate and we were going to be able to create huge opportunities for these agents um, before we all decided to do it. And, and then I went to my leaders, you know, I went to my, my leadership, my team leaders and said, Hey, like, it's looking like this is a real thing. Um, this is, you know, and we did, we met many times and went over what, what, what do we have to look at? All right. So we, we have to look at the orchestration of this. We have to look at the, the financial, um, the compensation model, the economic model around this. Um, and, it, and it was like, across, you know, it was just across the board. We all just kind of looked at each other and raised our eyebrows and we were like, all right, <laughs> this is it. Yeah. Right. What, what, what Jay Kinder always says, once you see it, you cannot see it. Right. And, and, it, and it is kind of true, man. It, it, it really is. And it was the same way for us. So, you know, you, you made the decision, obviously, and, and then announced that you were coming over um, last week, right, at the, at the beginning of last week. And then, like, you have this um, 
you 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 have a you guys run a seminar on 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 Friday, right? And it, right. and it's why that you know the top you know it was it five or seven teams that that uh, left Keller Williams and came over to to join uh, EXP, and that event was like off the chain, right? It was huge, man. And and so you guys signed up, I think another like forty people at that point. But before we go into that, I'm, talk talk to me about the idea behind um, behind you know putting on the seminar uh, and then, and then we'll naturally transition into, you know, what happened at the seminar and then talk to a little bit, talk a little bit more about how the additional uh, agents signed on with you. So talk, talk to me a little bit about the seminar. So we, my, my buddy, Brett Sakura, who owns the Sakura group and they came over with us. Um, and he's a good friend of mine. And we, we, Brett, we, Brett we, we on the show on Wednesday, I believe. So, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And you know, Brett, and I've been close for a long time. He, he was on my team years ago and he built his own team and he's got a great team. And we, you know, we always talk about ways to get into business together. We invest and we do a lot of flipping together, but just as, with our real estate businesses, because we have the same mindset and, you know, we, we all like to, to grind and, and work hard. Um, he actually brought this, this idea to me like a month before I ended up talking to Pam, uh, Tammy. And it was like, I, I didn't, he, he said it, he was like, yo, EXP or something like that. And I just, it was the same thing. I was just like, all right, that went right over my head. Um, and then when I, when I went back to him, he's like, yeah, dude. So we wanted to do this big. We knew right from the start that if we're going to do this, like it's going to be that we, you know, are able to attract a bunch of teams that are, this is going to resonate with. And we all do this together and we all support each other um, because now we've got this financial alignment and, I don't even remember like planning all this, but like last week, the week before last, it was like all of our agents are in our hub, like shooting videos. Right. And then it was chaos. Like it was like shooting the videos, like getting all this together, doing all this stuff. And then, you know, our editors up all night, Super Bowl Sunday, like editing the videos and then Monday we resign and then the videos go out at 12 and it's 12, 10, like uh, the, the whole, it was nuts. Um, yeah. the, but at some point we were like, all right, well, what do we do? on the video, <laughs> like, you know, what's the call to action? Like, what do we, and, and so we were, we're like, all right, well, if we plan an event, right. Because we knew there was going to be a lot of people who are like, why would this, why would you do this? Um, so we, we said, let's plan an event for Friday and, you know, we'll get a URL. We'll point that URL to an event, right link. And we'll have everybody, you know, promote this uh, URL. And so it went nuts and it got the bombed the url and you know we expected like 15 20 people to come to this event and the point of the event was to bring value and to be honest and let everybody know why we made the switch so we expected 15 20 and we ended up getting 175 people Jeez, to sign up for this event wow so, <laughs> yeah it was crazy and and we're like looking at each other like wow um so we had to change venues and one of the agents on my team tatiana um, who I think you might also talk to who's yeah. amazing. She, she helped us move the venue and, you know, we had this event and we said, you know, we talked with Dan beer and uh, he's been like so helpful. And he said, all right, guys, here's, here's the layout. Here's what you want to do. But before you say anything, make sure that you're bringing value. So we started off by, you know, I talked about our open, our mega open house model yeah. and told them every single thing that we do for our mega open house model. And then Brett talked about his gauntlet, that he'll talk to you about. And we all kind of shared some value. And then we just um, did kind of a panel and then we did a Q&A. But people were locked in, man, like heads nodding. Like it, the energy was great. The questions were awesome. It was a lot of fun. Dude, it was a brilliant idea. And I do like that. I do like the fact that, you know, you guys are laying the foundation with with bringing value because, you know, that 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 is truly what it's all about, man, is 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 being able to have an event like that or even like this and being able to drop some value. Because it's one thing to have you on and just say, hey, yeah, we moved from Keller Williams and, you know, we joined EXP, blah, 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 whatever. But when you can really bring value, or, you know, that that's how you have an opportunity to change other agents businesses. Mm -hmm. and, and And I love the fact that you know, one thing that, that that stood out to me about what you said about your change is the fact that it was based on not 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 you, right? Because I mean, selfishly, you know, you're the team leader, right? And and so you make you you do make decisions, but at the end of the day, uh, one of the biggest things you know behind the decision you made was 
are can what can you do to help your team take that next level uh, or or join that next level of, of earning passive income and creating wealth long term wealth for themselves? And so you know that's what feeds that's what feeds the journey, man. That's what continues to to help your ship your boat rise, right? Is that yeah. you're not you're not out for yourself. Like you legitimately made the choice to move because you knew it would be better for you. But even more importantly, you knew it would be better for those folks who are coming with you, right? That's right. Because if we didn't leave, like I would have done very well. You know, they didn't want me to leave and and I would have been okay. Um, w- way more than okay. Yeah. Um, and, and the truth is that that doesn't do it for me. Like, you know, I, I could set this up in a way where it's top down and, 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 and set it up that way. But honestly, like so many people ask me, like, why don't you just go sell a hundred homes and just, do, you know, just get an agent and an admin. But the important thing for me that I realized like a couple of years ago is impact is really important. Being able to have an impact on as many people as possible in a big, in a big of a way as possible is really important to me. And I knew this was the way to do that immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like you're at a point in your business too now, man, where you're you're probably able to take your foot off the gas a little bit as it relates to, you know, maybe going on buy or seller appointments, if you even do that anymore and really kind of step into more into your agent's lives and be able to add value based on uh, what you've learned over the last 10 years and then helping them grow their businesses. Um, And now you've stepped into a platform where, um, you, exponentially, the, the the opportunity to to add value into agents' lives is is unlimited, and so you know. But I'm I'm curious, man. Ultimately, so at the end of the day, when you talk about adding value, and and, and we both know the answer to this, but there will be people that are watching this, um, or will watch this in the future, or listen to it in the future. When we talk about bringing value through the move to EXP, talk talk explicitly about what you mean by that. Um, first just financially, you know, they're in a better spot. Yeah. They're going to cap and they're going to cap in like two deals and they're going to make more money and they're going to make more money very quickly. And when they make more money quicker, they're happier and they do more business and they operate better and their energy is better. And it's easier to work on your mindset and, and you hear, th- you see things through a different lens when you're making more money. So that's the, the immediate thing um and then the opportunity to the the training right because now not only the training that they get through exp the company but we're now all aligned together financially so i'm hanging out with brett we're direct competitors and we're hanging out helping each other right my director of growth is coaching his guys and then we're hanging I don't know if I can mention them yet, but we're hanging out with a bunch of really awesome people that are in our market that I, I, I love and I always wanted to like get into business with them, but it didn't make sense for us to merge. And now we're all aligned through this revenue share opportunity. And my agents are getting the opportunity to, to get value from Jay Kinder and uh, Dan Beer and Kyle Whistle and Tammy and Mary Maloney and people like you. You know, we just see it all of a sudden. It's like, whoa, we're like, we're all really tight all of a sudden um, because we're financially aligned. And then we look down the road and some of the people that we're talking to are like so awesome. And we probably never would have gotten into business with them or even met them. But I met some of these people on Friday that I might not have ever known. And I'm like business partners with them now. Yeah. And, and, and my agents are too, like they're hanging out. We did a happy hour after and like, there's a lot of people there. So we're going, all right, well, who, you know, our agents had invited some of these people. So they're going to have the opportunity to build their revenue share by just inviting people to, to this cool event where they're going to get value and they're going to, you know, get to, to network. It's really, it's really just exciting. And, and, and when you look at the model that f- through that lens, it's like, how, how big can we go when all of these big players are now working together and there's plenty of business in the market for us to do that. Isn't that awesome, man? Like that, that, that to me, that, um, that community, that culture, it was, 
it was a surprise in that, and I guess we should have expected it given the type of people um, who have joined EXP, um, most of all whom come from an abundance mindset, right? Um, the Jay Kenders, the Mike Reese's, the Al Stasics, um, Kyle Whistle, Dan Beer, all, I mean, major, major, of, you know, come from abundance guys. But I, we never expected that the community would be as tight and that they would be so forthcoming with the information uh, that they've learned in their businesses over the years to share with, you know, not just me, but, you know, our, all of our team members, all of your team members. And to me, that was the biggest surprise. And I hope people listening to this really understand the importance of being able to um, take information from some of the top agents like yourself and, and those agents I just missed, I, I just mentioned yeah. and, and apply that into their business and the type of impact that can immediately have on your business. Um, you know, if you're implementing that type of stuff, the type of stuff that you, you and I paid several thousands of dollars for over the last, you know, you for 10 years and, you know, me for, you know, three years, four years now. And, and, and so I, 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 that was the biggest surprise to me. And I think I just overlooked it. I should have probably expected it given the group that was, uh, that was already here. But I, 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 to me, that has now like moved up to the number one reason I think we're here and the number one reason I think we stay. I feel it already, man. You know, when I'm looking at, you know, watch this. Uh, this guy's name is Jamie Morang, right? He just joined. He came over with us um, in the same group as us, but he's a single agent. And I don't know, he did six, eight million in his like second year last year in volume. And watch what he does because I think he's going to be a monster and he's going to be a great example of like, yeah, we're, we are a big team. Right. But I, I see the value of single agents um, and even smaller teams because we're talking to them now and we're talking to them as if they're a part of our team. Yeah. Because we've, we're financially aligned. So what, what's mine is yours. Like, let's go, like come in prospect with us, do whatever, you know, do whatever you want. Here's, here's our training on this. Like it, the sharing, I think what you were saying before is the sharing is going to have a major impact, especially when it's also sharing, like within our market, we're going to do better business together. We're going to take bigger market share. Um, and we're going to have, a, I almost cursed. We're going to have fun. Let it go, brother. Let it go, man. <laughs> this, is a, this is an adult show. And just so you know, I just checked my calendar. Um, Brett will actually be on tomorrow, and then I've got Jamie on on Wednesday. So you'll get to hear both of their stories, and then uh, we'll get Tatiana worked out as well. But before we put a bow on this one, man, I do want to – and I know you mentioned – and I got a lot of stuff, and we're going to run out of time. But I, I do want to – I want to leave the audience with some with some good value here. Um, yeah. I know some of the places you're really winning in your business, um, just based on our conversations, is at, with the Mega Open House – and then I want to talk to you, uh, or I want you to talk a little bit more about the um, uh, uh, the, appoint the Appointment Academy. Get it okay. talent through the Appointment Academy. So let's start with the Mega Open House, and then we'll transition into the Appointment Academy after that. Okay, so, so I'll go quick because you're running out of time. Um, mega Open House, basically, the goal is to get 25 people to agree to come to the Open House. And when we do that, we have success, massive success. We sell two homes. We get two sales whenever 25 people who are targeted um, agree to come to this open house. You get a buyer or seller average over time. So the goal becomes get five people a day to agree to come to your open house. So you're calling a targeted group. You're marketing to a targeted group. Um, you're not just cold calling. You know, we're using our systems, our databases, predictive analytics to be able to target who we're calling. The biggest thing that happens here is the agent's mindset changes because they're not cold calling anymore. They're calling to invite somebody to an event and they sound different, they sound more confident, their mindset is stronger, um, and they're calling and saying, hey, we're having an event, we're launching this property, we have an open house Saturday, and we're calling to invite you to the VIP hour from 12 to one o'clock. Um, and that's the goal, is to get five people a day to agree to come. Then we're mailing them, we've got like a wedding invitation type of postcard that we mm -hmm. mail them, and it just says, you know, come to our VIP hour, you know, uh, the drill group in cordially invites you to VIP hour. Neighbors only, open house from 12 to 1. And then there's the public open house from 1 to 4. So our ops team and our lead gen team are now targeting them on social media with different ads, um, 
different type of lead ads and different type of marketing pieces and branding around this. So they're getting it everywhere. We're dropping texts, we're dropping voicemails, we're talking to them. Um, once the prospect agrees to come, they're, they're sent a calendar invite, right? So it makes it real. And then on Thursday and Friday, the agents are following up just saying, hey, just making sure you're still coming on Saturday. Who else do you know that might be interested in coming and hanging out with us? So we know that any, any time, and there's a lot of other stuff that goes into it. We don't we have tons of time, but I'm sure I'm going to do a webinar that breaks down all of this stuff and give you the examples and everything. But we know that whenever we do it, we have, we have massive success. Um, when the agent does what they're supposed to do and we do what we're supposed to do, it works every single time. Um, so it's, it's been, it's been awesome. And we definitely plan to, um, to really go very heavy on that this, this, uh, this spring as well. So, so this would be like, um, for example, like if we had a commissions Inc database, right. And we knew we were doing, we had, a um, we were doing a, a we we're doing an open house for an $800,000 home in Hoboken, New Jersey. Right. And so you go into your commissions Inc database and you say, okay, I want all my, my home buyers, uh, in Hoboken, New Jersey, who've registered on the site in the last, you know, uh, six months and the, um, uh, from, you know, 650,000 to a million. Right. And then, and then you bring those people out and then you call each one of them and you invite them to the open house and you send them an email. Right. And then you can do a mailer, obviously, if you get their, their, their is that, is that what you mean? Kind of something like that? Yeah. I mean, it's a combination. So we're looking for, it depends on the property type, right. But we're either look, we're looking for five different buyer profiles. Um, and usually three to four out of those five profiles are already homeowners who are going to be sellers as well. Okay. Right. So they're getting to see what we're, what we're doing. Um, and, and it's a lot, you know, so they're getting marketed too heavily. So when they're, when they are looking to sell their place, they're going to, they're going to want to talk to us because they're seeing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we, we also market to renters, you know, cause there's, there are a lot of renters in our market. So we're going to look for renters who's, rent kind of lines up with uh, what the price point may be if they were moving up to buy to buy a home. Yeah. Super smart, man. It really is. Especially, I mean, I, I wish, I, I think, we, I mean, we're going to probably implement that right away. I, I'm just, just telling you, we're going to steal it from you, but anyway, yeah. I'm it out there. Um, okay. So um, let's jump I stole in. it from somebody else. So. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you steal it from Suarez? Yeah. Pretty much. No, that, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot, there were a lot of different elements that we, we incorporated from a lot of different teams. Yeah, man. That's what it's all about. Uh, R and D, right? Yeah. R and D. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, so talk to me about uh, the appointments Academy, ma'am. Yeah. So the appointment Academy is, you got to talk to this guy, Sekou, um, who is my director of growth and he is just a monster. Um, and he's one of the best trainers and recruiters in the world. Mm -hmm. So he and I kind of got together and we combined some of what he had been doing years ago with his coaching company and some of the things that I've been doing um, over the past few years in my trainings and workshops and, and all of that. And we, com we made this appointment academy. So basically, it's Monday to Friday from around 8 a.m. to 3, maybe 4 o'clock. Uh, so it's a full week. And... What we're doing is live lead generation, pitch coaching. You know, we're we're hands on doing lead generation and coaching. So we'll do some training, right? And then we'll say, all right, let's get on the phone. We'll get on the phone for a while. We'll generate some leads. Then we'll come back and debrief. Then we'll go through some texting lead generation, right? And then as those are coming in, we're, we're calling them. So it's basically lead generation mixed with training all day um, for five days. Um, and then Monday, um, I will do my goal setting and mindset workshop from about 11 to 1230. Mm -hmm. And Wednesday, I will do my uh, NLP objection handling workshop. And then Friday, we're going to do kind of a peek under the hood uh, to our systems and what's working for us. And we basically give out some of our lead levers and, and some of the things that we do. Um, we're... we're you know, 20 people in the room generating about $3 million in GCI from the appointments they got, potential GCI. Those are the types of numbers that we're, we're getting from this. Boom, man. Boom. That's amazing, yeah. dude. That's awesome. So, um, so what do you like? I'm curious, man. And this just, this question just came up in my mind. Like, I think I know the answer to this, but what do you, what do you enjoy most about the business now? What do I enjoy most? Um, 
I enjoy the people, man. You were going to say that. You know, and coaching I, like, and are you are you really getting into that 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 piece of it now? I really am. You know, like I, everybody in my group, um, I, I love to see growth. So I have really amazing leaders. I would not be able to have done this if I didn't have like the best leaders um, on, on my team. And and so I, I enjoy pouring into them. I enjoy helping to build things that are going to make their lives better. Um, and I, jo- I enjoy growth and money. Of course, man. Of course. Hey, one other question I wanted to ask you, man, and, and, and we'll, we'll bring this to a close. But what, what do you think? I, I, I love asking like top of the industry professionals about what they think this EXP model will actually do to the industry. And more specifically, like traditional brokerages like your uh, Berkshire Hathaways, your Coldwell Bankers of the world. What, what, what do you think happens to these companies in the next five to 10 years? I don't know. I mean, I could say this. Um, some of those people came on Friday. So, and it's a really, it's really tough to, to say, like I, you know, if one of the options I have would have been to, to, to do that or to open a brokerage, mm-hmm. um, the way the industry's moving and, you know, the, the affordability, like this, the, the financial piece of it, it's going to be really hard. And, and, you know, I, I, I mean, I don't mean this in like an egotistical way, but the way that we're doing this now, it's like, we're, it's, it's, it's competition in our market. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. What do you think? <sighs> You know, we, I've had this conversation with, with other people and like my thought is that at some point, right, um, if it's not just about commission split, uh, and we know at the end of the day, it's never just about commission split, right? I mean, you could always go to a discount brokerage um, or some other, you know, low value, uh, uh, high commission split brokerage and get more money, right? But it to me, it's about where it's it's where it's where value meets compensation, right? And, and so that... That to me was, um, that was what bridged the gap for us in EXP. It was where value met compensation. And, and now it's, it's it, what we were talking about before when we talked about, um, you know, the interaction that we're having with other top agents is it's, it, it's just, it's, it, now it just reaffirms our decision to have moved. And so my, I guess my question um, for traditional brokerages would be, how do you, how do you compete with that given the fact that you your value proposition is you know we do some marketing for you people recognize our names and we'll we'll provide you signs and business cards versus um hey we'll pay you a great commission split and uh not only that but you can coach with some of the top agents in the world to help grow your business because yeah. at the, end of the day i mean if you sell 100 homes at coldwell banker you could be paying fifty thousand dollars, maybe more than that. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what how their commission split breaks out, yeah. but like as far as I know, signs and business cards don't cost fifty thousand dollars, right? So, well, and along those lines, one of the things I said to a reporter the other day that didn't come out this way, but it was that, you know, some of these brokerages are going to have to do something, are already doing things, and are going to have to continue to do some things to keep their agents and their teams and their top producers from coming with us. Right. And so I don't, I, I have trouble seeing how that is going to, how they're going to do it again next year and the year after, because if I had a brokerage, I, there would be two ways that I'd be able to grow profit and sustain and, and grow revenue would be either production mm-hmm. or recruiting. And the, you know, production wise, if you're going to go down that route and you're going to build out training and coaching and you're really going to drive production, that takes a while before it's going to have as much of an effect to reverse this um, as needed. And the other side of things are recruiting. Well, we're all over here now, you know, we're with EXP and there's a lot of people coming with us. Um, I, I just, you know, it would, it's going to be difficult is, is, is what I said, um, because you, you, you have to change something yet. The thing that you have to change the financial piece 
um, how do you do that when you have the traditional brick and mortar in the, the in that same setup? How how would you possibly do that? And I couldn't I couldn't get answers on that, and I couldn't figure that out. And that's you know one of the main reasons why I was like, all right, you know, definitely let's go. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, listen, brother, I'm so happy to be in business with you, man. I was I was ecstatic when I heard you were joining, and uh, I was even happier when I heard you had some opportunity to come on the show and share today. And um, certainly this isn't the last time we'll talk. Uh, I know we'll talk more and, and you got a lot more value to give. And, um, I, I, I guess the last question I have for you, man, is, is, um, you know, how do people, like if people want to learn more about, you know, well, let's just say growing their business or the mega open house or, or any of the other litany of other things that you do or, and, and that you're using at a high level to, 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 uh, have the success that you have, how do they connect with you or how would you prefer they connect with you to get more information uh, or if they have questions about joining EXP, how would you prefer they connect with you? It's just, I, I my phone's blowing up anyway, but so I'll just say whatever, uh, however you want. No, go to, if, if, if you want to come to our event, so we're having another event on Thursday and it's going to be, it's in a different market, a little, you know, further away. It's a suburb of Hoboken. And if you go to elevate dominate.com, you can sign up for that event. And we're going to, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to share, we're going to give value. We're going to be honest. So elevate dominate.com next week. We're having a, well, tomorrow we're having a huge announcement in another market in central Jersey. And we're doing another event next Tuesday. So this week it's elevate dominate.com. Next week's event is dominate elevate.com. <laughs> Go to this website. If you're local, you could sign up. If you want to fly in, we have people fly in from other States to be here on Friday last week. Um, if you want to hear more about some of, our, there's three ways that you can be more involved in these lead levers in our systems. One is to be on our team, right? And so you could apply to be on our team and you could get a free coaching call. If you go to devogrowth.com. number two is come to the event. Number three is reach out to us, message us, um, email us, and we'll connect with you and, and help in any way we can. Bam, dude. Love it, man. Thank you so much. You. And, uh, listen guys. Uh, I, I would definitely recommend if you have questions about, you know, growing your business um, or EXP, uh, feel free to reach out to David. Uh, I know David is, is from the mindset that he is a giver man. And uh, and certainly if you want to reach out to me, um, you can go to meetmikewall.com. I'm happy to sit down and answer any questions with you as well. And uh, that's it for this one, my friend. All right, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. All right, David. We'll see you, brother. Peace. All right, man.